Ja. So we were talking about uh, 1D and 2D isoparametric formulations. In these formulations, what we have done is generally, let's say 1D, where U is equals to U I and I with let's say xa xb xc xd and there is a template which has C is equals to minus 1 by 2. So, this we can write this as in the global coordinate system. I mean, you can do it for multiple things as well. I'm just uh, writing it for a, a four-noded element where we know that n a and b all are functions of x. Similarly here, also we can write u is a function of c which is, let me call it as uh, the same thing, one, two, three, four nodes, u1, n1, plus u2, n2, plus u3, n3, plus u4, n4, where n1, n2, n3, and for our function of C. So, but so, but every time to do with this, we don't. Uh, we we need to uh, obtain to write the du by dx. For example, you need to find out. And these shape functions has to be determined based on the basis function where we have shown that n is equals to x times a inverse. This is also same where n is equals to c times a inverse. But this is a static that means it's since these positions are hard coded so this would be not varying for different that means the choice of xa xb xc xd are arbitrarily constant whereas this is not any more arbitrarily constant they are simply assigned values they are mapped values uh, assigned values so this would be a template whereas this would this would arbitrarily depend upon the choice of xa xb xc and xt so that's the reason this is a template template i can simply write since this equation of this line uh, is equals to c plus one half this is, is equals to zero this one is 
3 minus 1 half equals to 0. This is 6 c minus 1 equals to 0. I can write simply my n1 is equals to c plus 1 half c minus 1 half minus 1 divided by minus 1 plus 1 half just the normalization uh, minus 1 minus 1 half minus 1 minus 1 so this is the n1 of c and this is template similarly the other shape functions can also be derived but in isoparametric what we said is we want to just know the mapping that is and we want to map it using the same shape functions uh, which we have used for the template so let me just say that one as x is a function of c n i of c. so i'm using the same functions and the same thing i will also use for you can write it it's not a problem u u i n i c only that my x to c transformation is required or the other way around okay so anyway this is that transformation that gives you So, so for that, th this is the isoparametric uh, transformation which we are using. Further, the relation between dx is equals to or we can say easily something like dx y dx c is equals to xi dni by dc so this transformation we call it as jacobian matrix and when we want to compute dn by dx we know that it is dn by dx into dx by dx so if you know this we can compute so this quantity can be obtained by differentiating this since this is a template these derivatives are also template only thing we require is the position which are arbitrarily constant so this inverse of the Jacobian depends upon your positions. This is a template. And once you know this, the differentiation is already known. So you just multiply with respect to this. You will get your dou n by dou x. And this dou n by dou x This dou n by dou x is used in defining the B matrices and this B matrix is as the parametric formulation is used. So for 1D it simply boils down to be integral your stiffness matrix so further we said that dx has to be replaced by j into dx when you are doing in the natural coordinate system then this will become minus 1 to plus 1 dn x by dx which we obtained through this procedure
this is for the 1D. Now let's look for the 2D. 2D is also pretty similar. In 2D, the general template u x comma y is equals to u1 n1 plus u2 n2 plus u3 n3 plus u4 n4. I'm just giving it for an example of uh, like a b c d. Now the template I'll be using is a perfect square eta with 1 to 1 minus 1 to minus 1 okay and our v displacement would have gone as by the same definition i can one can also get the shape functions of the the template uh, to this and that we use as the same shape the same shape functions so the same shape functions here what will be using the previous thing we have shown that it is n1 and two similarly you can write the other things something like this would be there so since we already know these kind of things so I am using my same transformation xi ni and y as yi ni and my displacement as I already said is ui ni so we are all measuring in terms of natural coordinates are uh, mapped uh, coordinates so we know that we can write in general dx is equals to because this is a function of so let me write it this fellow can be better written as it's a function with respect to c and eta and eta so to 
plus similarly dy is given by do eta d eta so which we can write it as dx dy is equals to do x by do eta do x by do eta do y by do z do y by do d y sorry d x d eta or if I do the inverse mapping with the same procedure d x by d d x d eta would be do x do y do x do eta by do y into dx dy but this transformation we call it as dx dy is equals to Jacobian matrix times dx d eta so obviously this based on this definition this dx dc d eta would be if i take it to the other side the jacobian inverse of dx dy but what is jacobian inverse if i just connect it back here so the jacobian inverse means this matrix so but anyway how do you compute this this Jacobian matrix entry entities is let if I take this fellow out since I already know my x is equals to x i n i so my do x by do eta is equals to x i do n i by do c similarly do x by do eta is equals to x i do n i by do eta do y by do c is equals to y i do n i do do y by do eta is equals to y i do n i So, so once I know this, I take it and fill it in these four things. So I get my Jacobian matrix. Once I know these things, I fill my Jacobian matrix and then I take the inverse. This inverse is nothing but equal to these four parameters. The four components of this inverse would contribute to this further we know that in order to compute the b matrix we require do n by do x and do n by do y so in order to calculate do n by do x using the chain rule we can calculate do n by do c because this is a function of c and eta t eta by dx by do eta by d eta by dx similarly do n by do y is equals to do n by do eta Do xi, dxi, n by do eta 
is equals to d eta by t y. So, but this, 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 these four values are required. We already know these values because they are template based in the template we already know this these things so we can also get our differentiation so to get these fours if you look at it these are nothing but the entries of your Jacobian inverse so if you have computer Jacobian inverse the top one would be do c by do x the top right corner would be do c by do y the bottom left corner is do eta by do x the bottom right corner is do eta by do y. So, using these entries, we could find out this. So that means we have completely determined do n by do x and do n by do y. So that means we start with x is equals to x i n i. And we also have do n i by do c and do n i by do eta, and we compute d y by d eta as x i do n i do eta y i do n i by do and do x by do eta is equals to xi do ni by do eta do y by do eta is equals to yi do ni by do eta. So we compute these things using these four we make the Jacobian dx and we find J inverse uh, we find the J inverse and assign it to do eta by do x do eta by do y is equals to J inverse which is computed from this and once you have this, you use your expression again, do n by do x is equals to do n by do eta into do eta by eta is equals to and do n by do y is equals to do n by do d eta dy and once this is there you find your B matrix the B matrix for plane stress or plane strain we have seen to be something like uh, n1 comma x 0 2 comma x 0 n3 comma x 0 n4 comma x 0 n1 comma y 0 n2 comma y 0 n3 comma y 0 and this one was one half n comma 1 comma y n1 comma x n2 comma y n2 comma x n3 comma y n3 comma x n4 comma y n4 comma and once the b has been formed we showed that anyway our k matrix is integral x here to x b 
x0 to xf y0 to yf uh, v transpose d b dy dx but this is formed based on the template thing dy dx again has to be replaced as j times data dx so and further so the integral will change from minus 1 to 1 1 b transpose db and j times this is how we have computed our isoparametric formulation so which i will show you a code today that before that i need to talk about numerical quadrature so let's go to the today's topic of numerical quadrature so this is how you frame the k, k matrix so and very similarly you can also perform the um, the force vector rhs vector in the isoparametric formulation just change the measure from dx dy to corresponding local coordinate system okay so in this manner not only it is very quick to compute using the template base but it will also help you to overcome certain compatibility issues so that is the uh, importance of using isoparametric element now let's use to and let's today concentrate about how to do this integrations okay When I say how to integrate, I am not talking about conventional integration. I am talking about how to integrate. The statement is using computer, computers. And what I meant to be computers is using numerical not by symbolic process. So I might have used a symbolic processor a lot in my course, but what I meant to do is how do I integrate any integration using this. So let's talk about quadrature schemes today. So before I move on to quadrature schemes, let me stop and ask if you have any questions. Integration, okay. So by doing that, So let us say which is also known as quadrature schemes. So let's say we have a curve which is defined by f of x or p of x okay so this is our given curve and i want to perform p of x from let's say a to this is a and this is b i want to integrate this curve okay and i just want to call it as i so how do you integrate this in the numerical scheme? Why you want to do it in a numerical scheme is this computing clusters or the computer what you generally call are good at number crunching. So that means they are very good at doing actions such as um, addition, subtraction, division, kind of arithmetics. So what I want to say is I will an integration of this curve is nothing but the area under this curve because what we do is in the integration scheme we take very small differential element which is dx and the height of it is p of x at that given point and we are adding all these differentials from this to 
this. So I will write this one is summation of v of xi delta x. Okay. So that means instead of making infinite similarly small trapezoids, if I make a finite trapezoids, that means I divide this into let's say 1, 2 as 3. Here I will write it as this trapezoid. This is another trapezoid. This is another trapezoid. So I can write it as let's say this is 1, 2, 3, 4. So this is nothing but simply this is an again a numerical approximation. So I already written an approximation here. I already written it's an approximation so I don't have to worry about it. So they have four points. I'm evaluating at A, I'm evaluating at this, I evaluate and let's say they are at equal intervals. Okay, that makes our life even more easier. So this is called trapezoidal rule. Using the trapezoidal rule, what I did was evaluated at, let's say, 1 plus phi x2 divided by 2 into, let me say, the interval is h by 3, let's say the total height uh, is, this is total uh, from a to b, let h is equals to b minus a, not the height, the width is h is equals to b minus a, then since it is equipartitioned 1, 2, 3, 4, so we will say each one is h by 3, so this is the trape trapezoid whose base is this one and height is v of x1 and v of x2. So v of x1 into v of x2 into h by 3 plus v of x2 plus v of x3 by 2 h by 3 plus v of x3 plus v of x4 by 2 into h by 3. So this is simply I can write it as W1 V1 plus W2 V2 plus W3 V3 plus W4 V4 where W1 in my case is equals to H by 6 same as W4 whereas W2 and W3 is equals to h by 3. Okay, so what I literally said is my integration i can be approximated as w i phi i. When I say phi i, that is phi evaluated at a point x i. Okay, so we know that I don't know about this integration, but we know that computers are good at evaluating a function. Computers are good at making a product of the function. They are also good at summing up all these products. So what we are doing is we are converting using our infinite symbol to finite spacing. And by converting the finite spacing, we are numerically evaluating the area under the curve. But unfortunately, when you are doing this, you may come up with some kind of an error. Here you can see when I take an average, you end up getting this one extra or this one less or this one less. So there are certain errors associated with it, with it, but it's an approximation of the area under the curve. So the integration is nothing but the area under the curve. So area under the curve, we are approximating it by the trapezoids. Now, I am going to ask you one question or we are, we are going to ask ourselves one question. Can I do this thing, this kind of a performing up to what kind of polynomial or what kind of a function?
pattern for which functions this this is accurate and which functions p of x is is kind of uh, approximation so for that i will discuss later but you can say that up to certain polynomials this is good but let's say if i take phi is equals to e to the power of x okay let me say if i take a functions which is exponential curve So, it starts with 1 and it goes to infinity, right, as infinite, so it's an exponential curve. So, if I take only as, let's say, discrete thing, I may not evaluate it exactly. So, now people ask this, this quadrature is, how good is this quadrature? So, the next better one I would say is, there is an error associated with this. So, let me rewrite it in a simplified manner. So, and I am saying that it is equals to wi phi i plus some error and the order of error in the previous case in the trapezoidal is h square so that means if i if i decrease my uh, h by half my error would diminish as 1 over 4 let's take a simpson rule in the simpson rule if i want to integrate it between in the simpson rule what we do is we'll say that it is f of a plus So that means I can write this one as w1 f1 plus w2 f2 plus w3 f3. Even Simpson rule is nothing but summation of, or sorry phi1 plus phi2 I will change this one to um, this one to F. So W one F one plus W three F three. So where W one is equals to B minus A by six. Let's call B minus A is equals to H is equals to H by six. So E is also equals to W three. Whereas w2 is equals to 4 h by 6 and it's an approximation it's a approximation so integral a to b f of x is equals to quadrature by simpson plus an error so the quadrature by the simpson has to have these things with the weight equal to this thing and f of 1 uh, is nothing but f of evaluated at a f of 2 is f of evaluated at m and m is nothing but a plus b by 2 f of 3 is equal to f of b so this error in this case is h to the power of phi so the simpson rule uh, is different a little bit uh, the Simpson rule uh, is like maybe it, it is quite lucky that we could uh, get it in this manner but 
even though we this site of uh, up to fourth degree polynomial this this um, this guy could integrate it exactly that's what it would say uh, so what I would say is can we develop any such kind of scene instead of three points can I use n point scheme so that is called quadrature so in simply any quadrature means i is equals to f of x dx can it be approximated as q where q is the quadrature defined as summation i is equals to 1 to n w i f i that means we are evaluating the function at n points and each one has certain weights attached to it okay this is called quadrature scheme when you integrate such kind of things you can show that a n point quadrature can integrate exactly up to n plus 1th polynomial okay so we'll come to that so this is called quadrature in the quadrature schemes how to deal with it is we will do like something like this so let us take a polynomial f of x as a polynomial which is equals to a naught plus a one x plus let's say this is a polynomial of nth degree so we will say that to find out these coefficients a naught or we know these coefficients to find out our weights what we will do is we know that our f of x will be easily integrated uh, dx so some arbitrary coefficients so some from a to b so without any so we want to find out the quadrature such that it is equals to w i f i and so so nth quadrature i'm sorry i have made a, it will integrate up to n minus 1th polynomial so let us look into it so this is up to n minus 1 because in the n minus nth polynomial we have so now what we are saying is if I use at n discrete points such that my x i is equals to let let's say um, i into h plus x naught so or to 0 plus a where i will go from um, let me say from i is equals to let from i is equals to 0 to or i can write it as 1 to n it doesn't matter 1 to n such that then I need to correct it as
where h is equals to v minus a. So for n minus 1 intervals, I have n points. So or we can say generally how to fit a polynomial we know that for n points we can fit n minus 1th polynomial exactly so we have n point scheme so I do have uh, n points okay so th this is correct so for n minus 1 equal intervals this is a this is b equal interval this is x1 this is xn so each interval is h is equals to b minus a by n minus 1 so what we want to say is we want to calculate um, so let, let us try out different kind of polynomials so it what we want to claim is a n point n point quadrature can integrate up to 2n minus 1 polynomial so n point quadrature can fit up to 2 uh, n minus 1 polynomial so let us check those validity so first take trial uh, test so for that so let's say if it can integrate up to this exactly it can as well as integrate x or some constant dx exactly so if it can integrate con dx exactly which from a to b which is b minus a by b minus a w1 f1 plus w2 f2 so on plus w n fn and similarly I will take x dx x dx is we know that it is x square by 2 that is equals to b square minus a square by 2 that is equals to w1 f1 plus w2 f2 plus similarly I will do up to n minus 1 dx that will be x to the power of n by n that is b to the power of n minus a to the power of n. So, but you need to understand that here the f function in this case is 1 in this case your f is equals to x and in this case your f is equals to x to the power of n minus 1 so let me just also give it as, as these f's are different in each cases so let me call it as f1 so that you don't get confused when I'm writing it these are trial functions so so I can rewrite this as integral dx integral I mean a to b f2 dx so on integral fn minus 1 let me call it as f0 
f1 so on up to n minus 1 where f0 is equals to x to the power of 0 and f n is equals to x to the power of n is equals to f0 evaluated at 1 f0 evaluated at position 2 so on f0 evaluated at position capital N so on like f1 f evaluated this trial function n minus 1 evaluated n minus 1 function evaluated at position 2 is f i j is nothing but f at i evaluator at x j that is equals to x to the power of i j simply that is or you can write it as x j to the power of i that is the simple thing you can understand about this so by doing that what we are saying is if this endpoint scheme can exactly fit n minus 1 can integrate uh, n minus 1 polynomial exactly then we can write in this fashion and matrix form this we can integrate it exactly because we know the integration we have already done that integration here and we can evaluate these functions and put it in this form and we 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 don't know this weight so we have to find out the weight so I will write it as I is equals to a matrix times W matrix where I is equals to integral F0 dx A to B A to B of n minus 1 dx which we know that it is equals to x by 0 factorial so on x sorry So, sorry, this is x to the power of 0, x to the power of 1 by 1 factorial, so on like that, uh, evaluated at a to b, evaluated at a to b, that is equals to This is two after integrating it will become one x to the power of one by one factorial 
x2 by 2 factorial xn by n factorial this is uh, so not factorial it is n not factor i am sorry about it i think i am confusing so x1 by 1 x2 by 2 so on evaluate between a to b and which would be this thing and our w mac thing is our set of weights w1 w2 so on wn and a matrix is given by So, which is nothing but this guy is 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, dot, dot, 1, this is x1, x2, xn this x1 square x2 square xn square xn minus 1 x2 n minus 1 x n power of n minus 1 so since we know the positions because in an interval we have n points so our as i told you xi is equals to a plus i minus 1 into h h is equals to b minus a by n minus 1 so since we know all xi's this is x xi x2 x3 all those things are known to us and that means what we can do is we can evaluate this function so our w can be now simply written as a inverse of i we already know our i's for the trial functions which are these things we already evaluated this we already evaluated just by substituting the position this one so all we need to do is by inverting we get our base so that means we proved we showed that if n point quadrature can exactly integrate up to n minus 1 up to n minus 1th polynomial their weights are given by is this now this is well and good so what we are saying is if I take e to the power of x as phi I can write this thing as 1 plus x by 1 factorial x square by 2 factorial plus x cube by 3 factorial so on x right it's a never ending kind of thing so 
now e to the power of x is not so if i try to integrate e to the power of x dx using the quadrature scheme that is let's say i take five point quadrature so i is equals to one two five and let's say i determined one two three four five for the for this scheme by evaluating that thing by using wi uh, let's say phi, phi i then there is error that is this is not equals to i because a fifth endpoint can integrate exactly up to fourth n point one n minus one th polynomial that is if n is phi our n minus one is fourth so fourth up to x to the power of four by four factorial these terms it would have integrated exactly and all the terms that are higher would not be integrated exactly and it will give you the error so that's what we have shown by telling that so not all functions can be integrated exactly if endpoint scheme is used if that phi if this phi is less than this number n then it would be integrated exactly otherwise it is an approximation so let's say for example if i take f of x is equals to 3x plus 8x cube the higher this is third degree polynomial so if i use a five point integration scheme so f of x dx a to b if i use i is equals to one to five then this is exact because i know this is only third degree polynomial if n is equals to phi up to fourth degree it will do exactly so this is not an approximation but this is is equal this is this is equal but not approximation so at this point of time what i will do is i will try to check with if you have any questions or anything that you need to understand and then we'll proceed question of this would be exact okay now why do we care about all these things okay let us go back a little bit and let us ask ourselves why we are doing such kind of things we are taking b transpose d b dx let's take 1d for example let's say minus 1 to 1 with some let's say some j times dx we are integrating in this doesn't matter with what measure i am integrating but i am integrating in one dimension so uh, let us look at it let's assume j is a constant for some reason okay j need not be constant all the time for example in this case let's assume j is a constant and let's say b is uh, let's b is nothing but do n by So x dx by dx, right? So this is again t. This is do n by do x dx by dc. So you can let's say if this is let's say n 
ni or whatever you want to call it as shape function is let's say quadratic okay that is a naught plus a1 eta plus a2 plus if this is quadratic i don't know what i have done so let me redo it So this is do n by do x. This is t, and this is do n by do x. But we know that do n by do x is equals to do n by do eta, do eta by do x. Let's say this is also constant, because if j is constant, this j inverse will also be constant. Let's say this is also constant for some reason. Not necessarily every time this is constant, as I said, it depends upon the mapping. But let's say for simplicity, I'm just telling you. Let's say if this is constant, um, and it says the, if this is quadratic, do n by do eta is linear. So if this is linear. Everything else is constant. This is linear. So this is uh, quadratic again. The entire expression is quadratic with respect to d eta. So let's say if this is this is cubic. If this is cubic. This becomes quadratic. If this becomes quadratic, this is quadratic. This is quadratic. It will become quartic. Out of the fourth degree. Okay. If j is also again a function of c, then your power would be your degree would be much more higher. Okay. There is j and also j inverse, so accordingly the things would get complicated. I mean, the polynomial degree would be there. So when we are evaluating numerically, most of the time, uh, I mean, we can estimate it. What would be the uh, order of uh, the polynomial we'll be estimating? So if I take nth degree polynomial for my shape function, okay, I know this is. Uh, 2n minus 1, and I know this is also uh, sorry. This is n minus 1, and this is n minus 1, so it will become 2n minus 2 degree polynomial. So, if I take take nth degree polynomial for the shape function, that is 2n minus 2 degree polynomial will be what I'll be seeing inside my integration for each and every entry. Now, in order to do this, we need to have at least 2n minus 1 points, point quadrature scheme. Now, finite element is all about saving cost. So, now, I we want to ask our question, do you want to take, I mean, let's say if I come back here to integrate, to I know that a five point uh, will integrate up to fourth degree polynomial. Now, I want to ask, do I really have to use up to five point integration? Can I not get it done with a let's say two point integration with a different set of let's say these are different set of ways and at a different positions let's anyway the position will accordingly change because as xi is equals to a plus i minus 1 by h and h is equals to b minus so our n changes our x size also accordingly change so if i take i is equals to 1 to 2 the positions again changes your weights also changes but can i deal with less than 2 to integrate this fellow is the question now if you do equipartition just like a quadrature scheme it is not possible but if you also choose so what we did was in quadrature scheme Our xi is equals to a plus i minus 1 into h and h is equals to b minus e. Why do you need to choose this equidistance?
so if i don't choose my distance equidistance then let's say i have n point so that is i have n weights and i have n positions to choose but we cannot choose all n because our end points a and b are fixed so i can only choose this n minus 2 so we get if i keep my xi's are also arbitrary such that it will the certain choice of xi's and a combination of wi's can integrate up to 2n minus 2 polynomial that would be better so that is the thing it is called as Gauss quadrature I will not show the derivation what you can do is you keep doing the same thing but what we see is our xi's are also we cannot use the similar thing here xi's are known to known to us in this case whereas in the other thing we would not know the xi's exactly so we have to start with a function which would take up to a function which is up to 2n minus 1 and we will try to deal with the, that kind of things so anyway so i will directly give the gauss quadrature points for n minus 1 So, if n or this is n column, this is xi's column, this is wi column, if n is one point quadrature scheme, then you evaluate at 0 and your weight is 2. If you are evaluating it so in this case if you have minus 1 to 1 and here in this case a is equals to a and b a is equals to minus 1 b is equals to 1 we are doing with the within the uh, natural coordinate system so in a in a template manner so these are for the template not for arbitrary a and b but a is equals to minus 1 b is equals to 1 your x you have only one thing that is your and your weight is equals to 2 corresponding to that now and this is called gauss points if i have two point integration scheme it is same again minus 1 to 1 my integration let me put the integration point by x so i put my integration points at this place they are not equidistance these are not equidistance they are given by plus or minus 0.57735 and the weights are 1 and 1 for both the things for the plus plus also it is 1 that is also 1 if it is 3 point quadrature scheme then your 3 points are given by plus or minus 0 0.77459 and the third point is 0 the weights are for this is 0.88888 and for the third one so both one is the same so both will have the same uh, wi so let me just keep one thing so that means if i don't give two that means both weights are one and for the second one uh, the weight is given by point eight eight nine similarly if you want to do fourth this would be plus or minus eight six one one three plus or minus point three three 
0.9998 with the weights given by 0.34785 and 0.65214 this is also it so in this case for the three point scheme so we have seen that our integration points are at 0 at plus mi minus 0 0.77 and plus 0 0.77 0. For this case, it is at minus 0 0.86 plus 0.86113 and minus minus 0 0.339 and plus 0 0.339. So this is your quadrature schemes and the corresponding weights are given by this. So if I want to integrate, so I will, let's review it. So these are the quadrature schemes, normal quadrature scheme. While for the Gauss quadrature, what we have is, uh, we have a W n points, so the n point, the choice of n will give n minus one, and the, the this would give you another choice of n that is total is two n minus one, right? This is for the uh, the kind of uh, Gauss quadrature, but different types of Gauss Lobato uh, where a and uh, the n points are fixed where it can go up to uh, kind of 2n minus 2 kind of uh, so, so anyway this is 2n minus 3 so so let me re uh, review it so if you are using just quadrature with n points we get exact up to n minus 1. If you use Gauss quadrature, then there an addition of up to another n will be there. But if one end point is fixed, with one left end or a right end is fixed, it will reduce to 2n minus 2. If both the end points are fixed, one end is fixed it is 2 and 2 and if 2 ends are fixed a and b then it will be 2n minus 3. So in general we use normal Gauss point where the end points are not fixed that means your end need not be chosen so in this case what we have done is our end is not chosen to be the this end point or the other end point we kept it optional so for the Gauss quadrature schemes what I have presented here is for a simple Gauss quadrature not with this is the Gauss quadrature table without end point constraints so without end point constraint since you see the Gauss points are not chosen to be the end point so in this case if I take fourth order polynomial, let's say four point quadrature scheme, n is equals to four, I can exactly integrate up to two n minus one, which is two into four minus one, seventh degree polynomial. Exactly. Now we generally think that what is a big deal about doing this kind of uh, small savings. So, in fact, the small savings makes really big deal and in the millions of elements each element will, when you are integrating it at every time step at every time you make an assembly you are saving for the seventh degree 
where you need to take eight point polynomial now you are only done with this fourth four point evaluation that means you are saving four multiplications and four additions let's say for simplicity and over a million that means you have saved four million calculations that means if a code runs for uh, let's say x days maybe your code can run with alpha times x where alpha is less than one that is you can run your code by using a gauss quadrature scheme little bit quickly than your fellow colleague who use a simple quadrature schemes just by not fixing the points of the things as equidistance so these gauss quadratures are not equidistance they are given by these distances when a and b is from minus 1 to 1 so and what is the great thing about gauss points are at the gauss points your b matrix is evaluated exactly if your b matrix is evaluated exactly that means your strain is evaluated exactly so just give me a minute characteristics of Gauss points so at Gauss points done by gradients are gradient of shape functions are evaluated exactly so strain is exact at gauss points and so as the stress is also exact at gauss So this is the important thing. So at nodes, stress after computing is not exact. You are just using projection method to which you have evaluated at the at the at the cost points to estimate it at the nodes. It's only the projection of the state of the stress when you calculate at the nodal points okay but if you want to evaluate the stress exactly it gets automatically ex exactly evaluated at the cost points but you also have to note that at nodes degrees of freedom are exact at gauss points stress is exact and at cost points the degree of freedom may not be not exact it's an interpolation so that is a very key thing that people have to remember when they are uh, doing this uh, doing the numerical scheme at cost points the stresses are exact at nodal points degree of freedoms are exact just because the degree of freedom is exact your gradient fields like stress are not necessarily exact at the nodal points they are only the projection from the gauss points okay so this is for the 1d so what now we will do is we will do for the 2d case Two D so in two D so one point or generally quadrature scheme is given as W I W J F of 
xi yj where ni so there are n gauss points so this you just your xi yi can be picked as a combination of any of this from this table so you can you can also have yis as the same combinations as thing there's let's say yj i will call it as yj and correspond with this becomes wj this means r so either you can pick these things as x similarly you can pick this as corresponding for the corresponding xi you will have wi for corresponding yj you will have corresponding wj and there you go this will become a two dimensional uh, two dimensional integration for this can be approximated for integration of minus 1 to 1 minus 1 to 1 f of so this can be evaluated in this manner so this is a quadrature in the two dimensional things so for one thing i can clearly say for one point quadrature your wi you can redefine this one as you can redefine this as capital w i small w i small w j, j j so for one point which is for one point it is one cross one points so total number of one points so w 1 1 is equals to 2 into and your x1 is equals to 0 y1 is equals to 0 so that means this is your single point for one point quadrature scheme and for one point quadrature scheme the total number of evaluations is this now if i use 2 2 cross 2 so for 2 cross 2 your w i j is equals to w i into w j that is equals to all are equals to 1 and your x i is given as plus or minus 0.577 and y j is also equals to plus 0.577 so this is 0.577 comma 0.577 this is minus 0.577 comma minus 0.577 this is 0.577 comma minus 0.577 this is minus 0.577 and plus 0.577 so this is two point scheme similarly you can come up with the 3 by 3 3 by uh, 4 by 4 or not necessarily the same combination you can go with m cross n where it can be 3 cross 2 2 cross 3 depending upon the problem and requirement you can construct the uh, higher order uh, higher dimensional quadrature schemes so in this manner you can use a simple one dimensional quadrature scheme and you multiplex it this is what is called multiplexing for the other dimension if it is two things you have multiplied it with the with the the same thing is used to construct the mm, the higher dimension so if you have three you can as well as write w i j k which w i into w j into t. so let's let me show if i
f of x i y j z k so the same again can be used even for the choice of z k and w k so like that you can multiply x it the same choice can be used then it will become three dimensional which will be difficult for me to draw but uh, you can let's say if you have two cross two cross two would be somewhere here 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 with xi is equals to plus r minus 0.577 yj is equals to plus r minus 0.577 zk is equals to plus r minus 0.577 and wijk one for all the cases for a two cross two cross two or if i want one cross one cross one then x i comma y j z k is all equals to zero w i j k is equals to two into two into two that is eight so this would be one point integration one cross one cross one point quadrature scheme and this is two plus two plus two integration scheme integration scheme so what we'll do is in the next class it is close to um, the thing so what uh, how to do um, uh, how to get the element stiffness matrix for 1d 2d in the isoparametric formulation as well as how to compute a numerical quadrature so that means we want to deal everything as much as possible in the numerical manner and now we have full control over the uh, the finite element for a mostly quasi static problems for the dynamic problems maybe in the subsequent class i will show you in the next coming classes so what i will do in the next class is i will try to demonstrate you how to kind of use the concepts that we have seen today to kind of write a 1d as well as 2d quasi static codes and then implement it to see how these codes actually work and that will give you the full uh, full-fledged example it will be more pragmatic of what you have learned in this complete course and what is the use of this quadrature schemes and so on and so forth in the uh, the things for that i need to run through the code it will take a longer time so what we'll do we'll end this class little bit early today and in the next class we'll continue with those examples